Hi, everybody, and welcome to our discussion about success with SASE. We're going to talk about SASE in general. What is SASE? Well, it's an acronym for a Secure Access Service Edge, but we're, we'll get into much more depth about what that means. We're going to talk about Palo Alto Network's approach to SASE with Prisma SASE, which is a combination of two of our, the products in our platform. Uh, Prisma SD-WAN and Prisma Access to give you a complete SASE solution. Now, these two components can be purchased and used separately, but combined together, they give you our complete SASE approach. So we're going to talk through all of this. First of all, what is SASE? Well, to answer that, I need to kind of go back in history a little bit. Traditionally, when we talked about security, enterprise security, network security, that sort of thing, the idea was that you had a physical network and a physical data center and all of your users and all of your applications, and all of your servers and all of your data was inside a physical network, a data center. And traditionally, the idea of security was, well, everybody who's trusted is inside and everything I need is inside. All I got to do is stop bad stuff from coming in. Well, that's changed over the years. Uh, the idea of software as a service. SaaS, not SaaS E, but SaaS. Uh, with things like Google Drive and Office 365 and applications you use uh, such as Salesforce and ServiceNow and all of these different applications. And all of that data is now up in the cloud. It's not behind a network perimeter. It has to be secured. Companies are moving from the idea of physical data centers to data centers in the cloud. So now services like internal DNS and LDAP and authentication services and things like that are being hosted in the public cloud on Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. And many companies actually are adopting a multi-cloud strategy. In other words, I need to have these applications in multiple instances in multiple cloud vendors for optimal uh, reachability and usability and also for high availability. Companies are growing, um, adopt, uh, buying other companies, uh, adopting regional and branch office strategies where you may not just have a global headquarters now, you have regional headquarters around the world. Uh, here in Palo Alto Networks, you know, we have our, not our international headquarters in California, but we have regional headquarters in uh, Dallas and in Amsterdam and Singapore and uh, branch offices and sales offices all over the world, uh, close to our customers. And of course, mobile users, people at home, people in hotels, people at airports, working remotely. And all of this, is expanding so quickly, especially the idea of the mobile users, people sit, uh, working from home, that companies have a really, have had a hard time adopting to all this movement out to the cloud and all this expansion of regional and branch offices and mobile users. It's a big challenge to scale this way. So people are out looking for a solution. The tr traditional solution for users in branch offices and regional headquarters and things like that was to take their traffic and send it through a MPLS or a multi-protocol label switch link, switching a link, a, a private link, or maybe even an IPsec tunnel back to a big data center 
that had firewalls and security stacks and things like that to be able to secure the traffic and protect protect it. But that means that you know users in two regional offices that are actually pretty close to each other still have to backhaul all the way back and forth across. Well, adds latency, adds poor user experience. So what are the options here? Well, you could add private paths in between the branch offices, but you don't have any firewalls, you don't have any security solutions on premise at either of these branch offices. So you either sacrifice security or you sacrifice performance. So that leaves you back to backhauling all the traffic back to a main data center, even if it's just users in one office trying to get out to the internet. Well, they can't go straight to the internet. What they end up having to do is backhaul, in this case, halfway across the continent just to get out to the internet. And to get to those applications, those SaaS applications that are now being hosted out on the internet. Again, poor performance and poor user experience. So that's the traditional model for users in branch offices. The other piece is mobile users. Users sitting at home, especially during the uh, pandemic and COVID and all of this over the last couple of years, there's been a huge increase in people working from home. And I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Well, again, if you're taking these mobile users and they're going back to that same main data center, you gotta build up equipment. You gotta be able to prepare for that huge increase in volume. You gotta buy bigger links to get out to the internet to support all of those mobile users. and it's costly and it's not easy, nor is it quick uh, or flexible to do this. So what you ended up in, in both of these cases was with big, bulky, slow moving, hard to change operations, non-agile, uh, have to buy equipment, has to be shipped, somebody's got to rack it and stack it, they got to set it up, they got to uh, make it all work together. You end up with an inconsistent security posture. You know, you got one vendor doing security for your mobile users, your remote access users, another one for your branch office users, another one at the data center, uh, one vendor is doing antivirus, another vendor is doing endpoint security. So you got this inconsistent security posture. It's expensive high operational cost complexity. It's expensive to buy all this equipment. It's expensive to hire the people to manage all this equipment. It's uh, very complex to set up, easy for things to go wrong. And maybe most importantly, it results in poor user experience. So users sitting at home or in a branch office, they want to get out to the internet. They want to be able to get to their SaaS applications and get to Office On Demand or Salesforce or whatever. If everything's clunky and slow and they get blocked all the time and things aren't working, what are they going to do? They're going to try to get around it. You know, turn off your remote access VPN. Uh, go straight out to the internet. Don't don't go uh, uh, back to that MPLS link to the to the main data center where you're getting poor performance. And when your user base tries to circumvent your security, they're gonna get breached. And when you get breached, you end up on the nightly news. And that's not where we want our customers to be. So the idea of SASE or Secure Access Service Edge it's taking all of those networking services like SD-WAN and IPsec tunnels and uh, traditional MPLSs and things like that and offering Prisma SD-WAN as a service, a service layer for transporting the traffic and 
offering security as a service. So again, you're not buying equipment. Talking about firewalling as a service and zero trust network architecture and secure web gateways and CASB solutions and IoT solutions and all of that that are traditionally done on physical devices now being offered in the cloud as a service. So now all your users can get out to the internet, they can get to their SASE solutions, whether they're mobile or whether they're at home uh, or whether in their branch office. Uh, so everybody can get where they need to be without a huge outlay for hardware. This is gonna reduce the complexity because you only got one vendor. It's going to reduce complexity because you only got one interface. It's going to give you superior security for all of your users, no matter where they're going and what they're doing. And as I said, it gives you a lower capital outlay to begin with. So you're, you're getting a subscription to a service. You're not buying a bunch of hardware. Security as a service includes things that you would traditionally find on hardware devices, uh, decryption, user ID, app ID, to be able to identify users and applications, uh, traditional known threat protections, wildfire for zero day protections, URL filtering, uh, endpoint protection with Cortex XDR, and our data loss protection are all, and many other things like IoT protections and stuff are all available as a service now, as well as the networking uh, with Prism SD-WAN and traditional IPsec VPNs uh, terminating to cloud-based devices, uh, clientless VPN, remote access VPN, all these things are now available as a service. So the networking and the security can now be subscribed to, again, instead of buying hardware to do it. What does the future hold for this? Well, even after the pandemic ends and people go, things go back to normal, uh, according to polls that uh, organizations expect that at least 62% of their employees are gonna continue to work either totally remotely or in some sort of hybrid manner. Coming in the office a couple of days a week or from home a few days a week. Companies are in, especially large enterprises are now moving away from physical data centers because there's nobody there anymore. They're all working remotely. Well, and for many other reasons because of cost too, but moving towards cloud data centers, data centers across multiple different cloud vendors, AWS and Google Cloud and Azure and all of that. They expect in the next two years or so that more than 60% of people that are using or companies that are using traditional SD-WAN are going to implement a full SASE architecture for secure access service edge not just the transportation layer of SD-WAN, but also the security level of a full SASE solution. So the future is SASE. Unfortunately, the existing traditional solutions don't fit the bill. Uh, hard to scale, hard to build out, expensive, doesn't really work for a combination of both branch offices and mobile users. Uh, you kind of have to do one or the other. It's hard to do both. Lots of security gaps because of multiple vendors and different levels of security and security capabilities among these different vendors. And if you're gonna stick with the most secure option, which is backhauling all the traffic back to a data center uh, with a huge security stack there, you end up again with that poor user experience. And as I mentioned, poor user experience leads to people not adopting the security requirements, trying to get around them, and leads to breaches. 
Prisma Sassy from Palo Alto Networks is a solution to all of these problems. Converging the idea of the mobile user and the remote network or branch office solution together in one with complete best in class security, all of the traditional security functionalities you'd see with an on-premise physical firewall and great user experience because we're eliminating that backhaul. So as I mentioned, there's two pieces involved here. There's um, Prism SD-WAN and there is Prism Access. We're gonna end up talking about both of these, but their combined solution is what gives us this full, complete SASE solution that we're talking about. The first piece is Prism SD-WAN. So the idea here is that the traditional SD-WAN uh, software defined wide area network, that's what SD-WAN stands for. Uh, in other words, internal traffic flows between branch offices, and data centers, that sort of thing is based upon traditional packet boarding, routing, which is layer three. Um, you might be familiar with the OSI model with seven layers. Uh, the physical layer, cabling and things like that. Data link layer, MAC addresses, layer two, layer three, networking layer. Uh, in other words, packets, and ports, transport layer, layer four, IP addresses. So what we call traditional layer three, layer four is all about IP addresses, port numbers. Um, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. So layers five, six and seven are all sort of jumbled in and considered layer seven, anything above IPs and ports, layer three and four is considered layer seven. So traditional layer three, forwarding packets by IP address, traditional routing is how traditional SD-WAN solutions uh, approach this. So there's no visibility into applications. There's no visibility into users. There's no visibility into sessions. It's all done packet by packet. And the traditional approach is also uh, manual, labor intensive, uh, hardware devices on each end. Uh, if you need to scale and get bigger, you got to replace them. Uh, you got to configure this stuff. You got to learn how to configure it. It's mostly CLI based and complex when you need security or you need threat prevention or you need user ID, you gotta buy different uh, blades and you gotta buy different hardware and you gotta learn different vendors and you gotta get this all working together. It's all bolts on, very complex. And you gotta get it working all together. So traditional SD-WAN solutions are expensive, complex, slow to build out, uh, difficult to manage. Whereas the idea of Prisma SD-WAN, Palo Alto's version, eliminates all that. First of all, it's application-based, all the way up to layer seven. Uh, it's autonomous. Uh, it can fail over and measure uh, metrics and choose the best link automatically without intervention. Gives you all the security functions you need. Takes care of the traditional things that would be backhauled to a big data center, servers and users, and things like security cameras and card readers and IoT devices, uh, POS for you know small storefronts, and kiosks in malls, and things like that where people are buying stuff and swiping their card. Healthcare industry. Uh, and hospitals and clinics and things like that. 
traditionally all that traffic would be backhauled to some huge data center halfway across the continent or halfway around the world uh, to be able to be secured. Now it can be delivered straight from the branch with devices at the branch level, what we call our ion devices, controlled from one piece of glass, one cloud controller for everything, the networking, the security, everything, without having to have multiple vendors and multiple interfaces and all that sort of stuff which gives us the ability to deliver all the things that would traditionally be at the data center level can now be delivered at the branch level, eliminating the expense and the poor user experience of backhauling back to a big data center. Prisma SD-WAN, as I mentioned, gives you application-based visibility. So now you can create policies for traffic to use multiple different links, fail over from one link to another one automatically, send each individual application down the path or the link that's gonna give it the best performance, automate failover, automate uh, uh, problem remediation and troubleshooting and deliver it all at the branch level with subscriptions without all the expense and poor performance of backhauling to the data center. It was all delivered at the branch level. Traditionally with layer three solutions, again, we're talking about packet by packet stuff. So we're looking at Patrick, uh, packet metrics, uh, packets per second, the size of the packets, packet loss, things like that. But you don't have a concept of what's happening within a single session what's happening for one application versus another. And that's where Prisma SD-WAN and our layer seven functionality gives you the ability to look at transaction times back and forth. When I make a request, how long does the reply take? Uh, how much of that is round trip time? How much of that is server response time? Uh, how much of that is network transmission time? Uh, individual packet failures and errors, uh, breaking things down into flows. So I can tell traffic in, in both directions, responses and replies, or requests and replies, uh, requests and responses, uh, understanding the performance of each side of this. Uh, things like MOSs, MOSs, main opinion scores for different lengths. Uh, things like codecs, digital streaming and uh, compacting audio and uh, video uh, so that it flows faster across the network. All of these things we have visibility into now with Prisma SD-WAN. Just an example of one of the little reports we have here, and there's tons of them within Prisma SD-WAN. Uh, here we're looking at specific application here. We're looking at Salesforce. And we can see uh, in green, the round trip time uh, between Salesforce and this branch location in uh, milliseconds over time, every 10 seconds, uh, it's scored. We can look at the server response time. How much of that time is the taking of the round trip time, is it taking the server to respond to our requests? Uh, we can look at uh, in blue, it's down there at the bottom. Uh, networking, network transmission times. How long is the traffic sitting on the network after the server responds and before it gets back to, uh, uh, to the other end? How long is, is it taking to uh, transmit through the network? So you get all of this information that you didn't have before. And you get it for all the applications running in your network. And you can tell when one application is working well down one link and another application is not, we can automatically send one application one way and a different application another way uh, to give you information about application successes and failures, uh, bandwidth utilization by application, 
What are the chattiest applications? Who are the chattiest users? Who's chewing up all your bandwidth? Uh, how do we want to prioritize these different applications? And measure the performance and health of those applications. Another big part of Prisma SD-WAN is the elimination of lots of hardware. So traditionally, you'd have some sort of a, a SD-WAN edge device at a branch. At the data center, if you wanted to be able to measure the performance of different applications, you had to have a different piece of hardware, a different edge device uh, to transport each different application through a pipe to be able to measure them separately. This is eliminated now with Prisma SD-WAN, one single device at the branch at each location. So I got two branches, 10 branches. I need two of them, 10 of them. If I have data center, I need one there. But I don't need separate devices per application because we have application awareness and layer seven visibility. So I'm eliminating all of these devices and just need one device for all these different applications. What, these, what this means again, is that all the stuff that used to go back to a big data center can now be delivered at the branch level to get out to the clouds or your SaaS applications or out to the internet or you know, back to a data center or whatever the case may be. Uh, with all the services being delivered and managed centrally with a central cloud controller to do this. Another big piece of this is the idea of our cloud blades. So a few minutes ago, we were talking about the complexity of traditional SD-WAN solutions and if you needed more functionality like security or user ID or threat prevention and things like that, you had to bolt on blades to a piece of hardware. You had to configure them and you had to manage them and all that sort of stuff. So the idea of cloud blades is taking what used to be physical hardware blades on a device and moving them to the cloud. Uh, we have cloud blades uh, for security and cloud vendors and automation and integration of operations and collaborative uh, collaboration and things like that. These are all things that traditionally would be different pieces of hardware now offered as a service up in the cloud. How much do cloud blades cost? They're free. Uh, so customers that need them can have them for no extra additional cost, you know, as long as they got Prisma SD-WAN. So the whole idea here is to automate the deployment and management of your SD-WAN solution, give you a great user experience, application level visibility, and uh, SLA service level assurances, uh, and best in class security. Automated, couple of clicks, you're up and running. So that's the first or one of the pieces I'm of, of our SASE solution. Uh, let's look at the different pieces and parts of Prism SD-WAN. Uh, so just quickly, the traditional approach was to have a device at a remote office connected to a device at a data center using a lease line or a secure communication between them and all traffic will go to the data center. So anybody, time anybody needed to go to one of their SaaS applications or anything like that, they had to go back to the data center and then out to the internet. So again, slow, poor user experience, uh, expensive. MPLS lines are, are not cheap much more expensive than a traditional you know, cable or, I, or internet provider. Uh, now we can send that traffic down multiple cheaper links 
uh, to get directly from the branch offices out to the internet and get to all those applications without having to backhaul back to a data center. And if your data center is up in the cloud now and not in a, um, a traditional office, now you can get to your data center up in the cloud. So it gives you tremendous hardware cost savings, uh, two to five times cheaper than hardware. Uh, lets you expand your capacity uh, back to data centers, between branches, out to the internet, to your SaaS applications, all that sort of stuff at a much lower price range for generic internet links and uh, things like that to replace MPLSs. And gives you, of course, all the security that you would traditionally get from backhauling to a data center. Now nah, you're getting at the branch level. When you have multiple branches and you have your traditional data centers and you got your data centers in the cloud and all of that sort of stuff, Prisma SD WAN deploys automatically so that all of these branch offices can talk back to um, data centers on the ground or in the cloud. They can even talk back to each other. And it's all done with what they call no touch provisioning or zero touch provisioning. In other words, these devices automatically link in with each other. Uh, there's nothing you have to do as far as building tunnels, doing all that sort of stuff. It, it's a very simple process. And it gives the ability with that insight into applications for administra uh, administrators to, to determine what applications are important to them, to segment and isolate networks, keep the guest traffic away from the internal traffic and protect PCI and HIPAA information and stuff like that with our zero trust network architecture prioritize different applications, what's important at the platinum level and what's uh, less important all the way down to the bronze level. Platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. And to choose different paths for different applications and, prior, and uh, choose backup paths if there's ever any sort of problem. All this is done with the idea of, of different policies. Prisma Access is the second piece. Prisma Access is designed to solve many of these problems itself, but also to integrate with Prisma SD-WAN for a full state-of-the-art next generation SASE solution. There are two different um, solutions built into Prisma Access. I have a remote network solution where again, your branch office users don't have to be back all the way back to the internet, uh, back to the data center anymore to get out to the internet. We deploy a cloud-based security processing node, think of a firewall in the cloud near the branch office location. And we've got a uh, 200 or more locations around the world you can deploy these at. Uh, so branch office users can now go through these security processing nodes out to the internet without having to be backhauled to a main data center halfway across the continent or halfway across the world or whatever the case may be. Uh, so those firewalls in the cloud, so to speak, are called RNSPNs, Remote Network Security Processing Nodes. And as the name denotes, security processing node, it does security processing. It does decryption and app ID and content ID and user ID and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and you can deploy these close to all your different branch offices. They're deployed in HA pairs by default, no configuration, uh, by the customer, no hardware to buy. It's all a subscription up in the cloud. 
Now, if you're using our SD-WAN solution with those ion devices at the branch level, those can be integrated with Prisma Access for additional security. For mobile users, uh, we offer a solution based upon Global Protect uh, with a portal that users uh, connect to and then mobile user SPNs or MUSPNs, which are synonymous with Global Protect gateways. Again, to let mobile users get out to the internet or talk back to data centers or talk to uh, remote networks and branch offices. And all of this integrates together. So the mobile user solution, the remote network solution, all of it, as I said, is as an integrated approach with Prism Access. And if we add Prisma SD-WAN, we can have those ion controllers at the branch offices to choose multiple paths to get to the internet and provide high availability at the branch level with multiple different links into Prisma SD-WAN, I mean, the Prisma Access and out to the internet. I mentioned the Cloud Blades earlier, and the idea of the Cloud Blades is to automate functionality. And there is a Prisma Access Cloud Blade that integrates with Prisma SD-WAN to automate spinning up all these different nodes, all these different pieces and parts in Prisma Access. Uh, if you're using the Cloud Blade, uh, well, if you're using Prisma SD-WAN, you're managing it through what we call our uh, cloud controller, uh, which is a GUI. You can also manage Prism Access through cloud-based GUI. And one of the cool things we've done is if you have both solutions is basically the ability to uh, flip between one and the other for configuring and looking at stuff and managing without having to log into two different GUIs or two different screens or two different pieces of glass. It's flipped back and forth. It's called our app switcher. To automate the configuration of Prisma Access when you're using Prisma SD-WAN to get those security processing nodes up and running in the cloud, uh, we simply have a tag that we add to any of the links that we want to join in with Prisma Access. It actually has some additional uh, configuration menus that it enables that gives you the ability to do things like set up um, multiple paths, ECMP, equal cost, multi-path. In other words, load balance traffic down multiple links or up multiple links. Uh, configure BGP automatically. Uh, configuring BGP um, uh, border gateway protocol for routing in inside uh, large enterprises and stuff like that. That is a very, very, very complex uh, solution. Requires very specialized information. Uh, BGP experts and companies are some of the highest paid, well, the highest paid IT folks. Uh, and usually it's people that have been in the industry for 30 years that do this sort of stuff. Um, now this can be automated. And we can on, automatically determine bandwidth, how big of these links are there. If we have multiple links up to Prisma Access now for the internet, how big are they? How much bandwidth do they have? What sort of traffic can they accept? And how do they perform? And all of that is automated between Prisma SD-WAN and Prisma Access. So this gives you a really full solution for SASE for uh, secure access service edge uh, with these two pieces of parts, these two different offerings that we have. I mentioned they can work separate from each other, but when they're working in concert with each other, each becomes easier to deploy and they both feed off each other and give you this full next generation layer seven uh, functionality 
to deliver you a full SASE solution from one vendor. So that is really what success with SASE is all about. Understanding Prisma SD-WAN, understanding Prisma Access, what each solution does, how they work with each other, how they are just like everything else in our platform, layer seven functional uh, to help us protect your digital way of life. So thank you everybody for listening in and um, we'll take some questions. If anybody has any questions that they'd uh, like to talk about or any discussions you'd like to have, uh, we will do that right away.